Peace and power and welcome back. Um, today we are going to be getting back into Behold a Pale Horse. I just wanted to drop in here. I'm going to read a chapter. I want to talk to y'all. I really don't like reading this book. It's so heavy. But I don't like leaving things incomplete. And this has been a tab open in my mind for almost 10 years. You know, when I don't complete something, it, it stays open in my mind. And so I should have been got this done. Say all that to say, we are on chapter 14 today. Um, I'm going to give you more room on the screen. A proposed constitutional model for the new states of America. This was something that was prepared over a 10-year period by the Center for Democratic Studies of Santa Barbara, California, at a total cost to the United States taxpayers of over $25 million. A proposed constitutional model for the new states of America. Preamble. So that we may join in common endeavors, welcome the future in good order, and create an adequate and self-repairing government, we, the people, do establish the new states of America, herein provided to be ours, and do ordain this constitution, whose supreme law it shall be until the time prescribed for it, shall have run and to many of you that don't know there are two constitutions article one rights a rights section one freedom of expression of communication of movement of assembly or of petition shall not be abridged except in declared emergency section two Access to information possessed by governmental agencies shall not be denied except in interest of national security, but communications among officials necessary to decision making shall be privileged. Section 3. Public communicators may decline to reveal sources of information, but shall be responsible for hurtful disclosures. Section number four, the privacy of individuals shall, shall be respected. Searches and seizures shall be made only on judicial warrant. Persons shall be pursued or questioned only for the prevention of crime or the apprehension of suspected criminals and only according to rules established under law. Section five, there shall be the y'all excuse me. <laughs> there shall be no discrimination because of race, creed, color, origin, or sex. The court of rights and responsibilities may determine whether selection for various occupations has been discriminatory. Section six, all persons shall have equal protection of laws, and in all electoral procedures. The vote of every eligible citizen shall count equally with, our, with others. And we all know they don't bend one against that. Section 7. It shall be public policy to promote discussion of public issues and to encourage peaceful public gatherings for this purpose. Permission to hold such gatherings shall not be denied, nor shall they be interrupted, except in a declared emergency or on a showing of imminent danger to the public order and on du judicial warrant. And see, I, it reminds me of a meme that I saw that said, if you allow the government to break the law during an emergency, the government will create emergencies to break the law 
And that was on the meme. Section 8. The practice of religion shall be privileged, but no religion shall be imposed by some on others, and none shall have public support. Section 9. Any citizen may per any citizen may purchase, sell, lease, hold, convey, and inherit real and personal property, and shall be and shall benefit equally from all laws for security in such transactions. Section ten: Those who cannot contribute to productivity shall be entitled to a share of the national product but not distribution shall be fair and the total may not exceed the amount for this purpose held in the national sharing fund. Section 11. Education shall be provided at public expense for those who meet appropriate tests of eligibility. Section 12. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. No property shall be taken without compensation. Section 13. Legislators shall define crimes and conditions requiring restraint, but confinement shall not be for punishment, and when possible, there shall be preparation for return to freedom. Section 14. No person shall be placed twice in jeopardy for the same offense. Writs of habeas corpus shall not be suspended except in declared emergency. Section 16. Accused persons shall be informed of charges against them, shall have a speedy trial, shall have reasonable bail, shall be allowed to confront witnesses or to call others, and shall not be compelled to testify against themselves. At the time of arrest, they shall be informed of their right to be silent and to have counsel provided if necessary at public expense, and court shall consider the contention that prosecution may be under may be under an invalid or unjust statute. B. Responsibilities. Section 1. Each freedom of the citizen shall prescribe a corresponding responsibility not to diminish that of others of speech, communication, assembly, and petition to grant the same freedom to others of religion to respect that of others of privacy not to invade that of others of the holding and disposal of property the obligation to extend the same privileges to others. Section 2. Individuals and enterprises holding themselves out to serve the public shall all equally and without intention to misrepresent conforming to such standards as may improve health and welfare. Okay, section three, protection of the law. Uh -oh. Protection of the law shall be repaid by assistance in its enforcement. This shall include respect for the procedures of justice, apprehension of lawbreakers, and testimony at trial. Section four, each citizen shall participate in the process of democracy, assisting in the selection of officials, and in the monitoring of their conduct in office. Section 5. Each shall render such services to the nation as may be uniformly required by law. Objection by reason of conscience being educated as hereinafter provided and none shall expect or may receive special privileges unless they be for public purpose defined by law okay number six each shall pay whatever share of governmental costs is consistent with fairness to all section seven each shall refuse awards or titles from other nations 
or their representatives except as they may be authorized by law. Section 8. There shall be a responsibility to avoid violence and to keep the peace for this reason, the bearing of arms or the possession of lethal weapons shall be confined to the police, members of the armed forces, and those licensed under law. Section 9. Each shall assist in preserving the endowments of nature and enlarging the inheritance of future generations. Section 10. Those granted the use of public lands, the air, or water shall have a responsibility for using these resources so that if irreplaceable, they are conserved and if replaceable, they are put back as they were. And see, it's just a bunch of horse poop because these people fly their airplanes every day, poisoning the air. And not just that, they spray stuff in the air on a daily as well. On top of flying airplanes. And they don't care. It's just, it is what it is. Okay. Section 8. There shall be a responsibility. Okay, I already read it. Section 9. Each shall assist in preserving the endowments of nature and enlarging the inheritance of future generations. Section 10. Those granted the use of public lands, the air, or waters shall have a responsibility for using these resources so that if irreplaceable, they are conserved, and if replaceable, they are put back as they were. Section 11. Retired officers of the armed forces of the senior civil service and the senate shall regard their service as a permanent obligation and shall not engage in enterprise seeking profit from the government so they just they stumping all over that they do engage in profit they just have added another um layer which is the lobbyists you know section 12 the devising or controlling of devices for management or technologies that shall establish responsibility for resulting costs. Section 13. All rights and responsibilities defined herein shall extend to such associations of citizens as may be authorized by law. Article 2, the new states, section 1, there shall be new states, each comp comprising no less than 5% of a whole population. Existing states may continue and may have the status of new state if the Boundary Commission hereinafter provided shall so decide. The commission shall be guided in its recommendations by the probability of accommodation to the conditions for effective government states electing by referendum to continue if the commission recommend otherwise shall nevertheless accept all the new state ob obligations section 2 the new state shall have constitutions formulated and adopted by processes herein after prescribed section 3 they shall have governors legislators and planning administration and judicial systems section four their political procedures shall be organized and supervised by electoral electoral overseers overseers but their elections shall be shall not be in years of presidential election section five the electoral apparatus of the new states of America shall be available to them and they may be allotted funds under rules agreed by the national overseer but expenditures may not be made by for any candidate except they be approved by the overseer and requirements of residence in a voting district shall be no longer than 30 days. Section 6. They may charter subsidiary 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 
governments, urban or rural, and may delegate to them powers appropriate to their responsibilities. Six, section 7. They may lay or may delegate the laying of taxes, but these shall conform to the restraints started here and after for the new states of America. Section 8. They may not tax exports, may not tax with intent to prevent imports, and may not impose any tax forbidden by laws of the new states of America, but the objects appropriate for t taxation shall be clearly designated. Section 9. Taxes on land may be at higher rates than those on its improvements. They shall be re Section 10. They shall be responsible for the administration of public services not reserved to the government of the new states of America, such activities being concerted with those of corresponding national agencies where these exist under arrangements common to all. Section 11. The rights and responsibilities prescribed in this constitution shall be effective in the new states and shall be suspended only in emergency when declared by governors and not disapproved by Senate of the New States of America. Section 12. Police powers of the New States shall extend to all matters not reserved to the New States of America, but preempted power shall not be impaired. Section 13. New States may not enter into any treaty, alliance, confederation, or agreement unless approved by the Boundary Commission here and after provided. They may not coin money, provide for the payment of debts in any but legal tender, or make any charge for inter new state services. They may not enact ex post facto laws or ones impairing the obligation of contracts. Section 14, new states may not impose barriers to imports from other jurisdictions or impose any hindrance to citizens' freedom of movement. Okay? Section 15, if governments of the new states fail to carry out fully their constitutional duties, the officials shall be warned and may be required by the Senate on the recommendation of the watchkeeper to forfeit revenues from the new states of America. I'm just wondering who the watchkeeper is. Article, the electoral branch. Section 1, to arrange for participation by the electorate in the determination of policies and the selecting, selection of officials, there shall be an electoral branch. An overseer, this is section 2, an overseer of electoral procedures shall be chosen by majority of the Senate and may be removed by a two-thirds vote, it shall be the overseer's duty to supervise the organization of national and district parties, arrange for discussion among them, and to provide for the nomination and the election of candidates for public office. While in office, the overseer shall belong to no political organization and after each presidential election shall offer to resign. It's just weird. They have put all this stuff in place. It's like, what do y'all know? Section 3. A national party shall be one having had at least five 
at least a 5% affiliation in the latest general election. But a new party shall be recognized when valid petitions have been signed by at least 2% of the voters in each of 30% of the districts drawn for the House of Representatives. Recognition shall be suspended upon failure to gain 5% of the votes at a second election, 10% at a third, or 15% at further elections. District parties shall be recognized when at least 2% of voters shall have signed positions as affiliation, but recognition shall be withdrawn upon failure to attract the same percentage as are necessary for the continuance of national parties. Section 4. Recognition by the overseer shall bring parties within established regulations and entitle them to common privileges. Section 5. The overseer shall promulgate rules for party conduct and shall see that fair practices are maintained and for this purpose shall appoint deputies in each district and shall supervise the choice in the district and national conventions of party administrators. Regulations and appointments may be objected to by the Senate. Section 6. The overseer with the administrator and the other officials shall provide the means for discussion in every party of public issues and for this purpose ensure that members have adequate facilities for participation. Arrange for discussion in annual district meetings of the President's views of the findings of the planning branch and such other information as may be pertinent for the enlightened political discussion. C. I'm reading A through Oh, well, I guess A through C on section 6. C. Arrange on the first Saturday in each month for enrollment valid for one year of voters at convenient places. Section 7. The overseer shall also A. Assist the parties in nominating candidates for district members of the House of Representatives each three years. And for this purpose, designate 100 districts, each with a similar number of eligible voters. Redrawing districts after each election in, the, in these, there shall be party conventions having no more than 300 delegates. So distributed that the representation of the voters may be approximately equal. Candidates for delegate may become eligible by presenting petitions signed by 200 registered voters. They shall be elected by party members on the first Tuesday in March. Those having the largest number of votes being chosen until the 300 be complete. Ten alternates shall be also chosen by the same process. District conventions shall be held on the first Tuesday in April. Delegates shall choose three candidates for membership in the House of Representatives and three House of Representatives, the three having the most votes becoming candidates. Okay, B. Arrange for the election each three years of three members of the House of Representatives in each district from among the candidates chosen in party conventions, the three having the most votes to be elected. Section 8. The overseer shall also A. And I'm reading A through E look like. So they shall also arrange for national conventions to meet nine years after previous presidential elections with an equal number of delegates from each district, the whole number not to exceed 1,000. Candidates for delegates shall be eligible when petitions signed by 500 registered voters have been filed. 
those with the most votes together with two alternates being those next in number of votes shall be chosen in each district. Approved procedures in these conventions for choosing 100 candidates to be members at large of the House of Representatives whose term shall be coterminous with that of the President. For this purpose, delegates shall file one choice with convention officials. Voting on submission shall proceed until 100 achieves 10 percent, but not more than three candidates may be resident in any one district. If any district have more than three, those with the fewest votes shall be eliminated. Others being added from the districts having less than three until equally until equality be reached. Of those added, those having the most votes shall be chosen first. See arranged procedures for the consideration and approval of party objectives by the convention. D. Formulate rules for the nomination in these conventions of candidates for president and vice presidents. When the offices are to fall vacant, candidates for nomination to be recognized when the petitions have shall have been presented by 100 or more delegates pledged to continue or support until candidates can no longer win or until they consent to withdraw presidents and vice presidents together with representatives at large shall submit to referendum after serving for three years and if they are rejected new conventions shall be held within one month and candidates shall be chosen as for vacant offices. There's a lot. Candidates for the president and vice president shall be nominated on attaining a majority. Arrange for the election of on the first Tuesday in June in appropriate years of new candidates for president and vice president and members at large of the House of Representatives all being presented to the nation's voters as a ticket. If no ticket achieve a majority, the overseer shall arrange another election on the third Tuesday in June between the two persons having the most votes. And if the referendum so determined, he shall provide similar arrangements for the nomination and election of candidates. In this election, the one having the most votes shall prevail. Section 9. The overseer shall also arrange for the convening of the National Legislative Houses on the 4th Tuesday in July. Arrange for inauguration of the President and Vice Presidents on the 2nd Tuesday of August. Section 10. All costs of electoral procedure shall be paid from public funds. So they put all together this show and then they want the public to pay for it. And there shall be no private contributions to parties or candidates, no contributions or expenditures for meetings, conventions, or campaigns shall be made, and no candidate for office may make any personal expenditures unless authorized by a uniform rule of the overseer and persons or group making expenditures directly or indirectly in support of prospective candidates shall report to the overseer and shall conform to his regulations. Section 11. <laughs> Expenses of the electoral branch shall be met by the addition of 1% of the net annual taxable income returns of taxpayers. This sum to be held by the Chancellor of Financial Affairs for disposition by the overseer. Funds shall be distributed to parties in proportion to the respective number of votes cast for the President and Governors at 
the last election except the new parties, except that new parties on being recognized shall share in proportion to their number. Party administrators shall make allocations to legislative candidates in amounts proportional to the party <sighs> vote at the last election. Expenditures shall be audited by the watchkeeper and sums not expended within four years shall be returned. It shall be a condition of every communications franchise that reasonable facilities shall be available for allocations by the overseer. The planning branch. This is article four. There shall be a planning branch to formulate an administrator and and administer plans and prepare budgets for the uses of expected income in pursuit of policies formulated by the processes provided herein. Section 2. There shall be a national planning board of 15 members appointed by the president. The first member shall have terms designated by the president of 1 to 15 years there and after. One shall be appointed each year. The president shall appoint a chairman who shall serve for 15 years unless removed by him. Section 3. The chairman shall appoint and shall supervise a planning administrator together with such deputies as may be agreed to by the board. Section 4. The chairman shall present to the board 6 and 12 year development plans prepared by the planning staff. They shall be revised each year after public hearings and finally in the year before they are to take effect. They shall be submitted to the president on the 4th Tuesday in July for transmission to the Senate on September 1st with his comments. If members of the board fail to approve the budget proposals, by the forwarding date, the chairman shall nevertheless make submission to the president with notations of reservation by such members. The president shall transmit this proposal with his comments to the House of Representatives on September September the 1st. Um, and I, my words are blurring together because it's just so much. Section 5. <clears throat> It shall be recognized that the 6 and 12 year development plans represent national intentions tempered by the appraisal of possibilities. The 12 year plan shall be a general estimate of probable progress, both governmental and private. The 6 year plan shall be more specific as to estimated income and expenditure and shall take account of necessary revisions. The purpose shall be to advance through every agency of government the excellence of national life. It shall be the further purpose to anticipate innovations to estimate their impact to assimilate them into existing institutions and to moderate deleterious delete areas effects of the environment and on society okay the six and twelve year plan shall be disseminated for discussion and the opinions expressed shall be considered in the formulation of plans for each succeeding year with special attention to detail in the proposing budget section six for both plans an extension of one year into the future shall be made each year and the estimates for all other years shall be revised accordingly. For non-governmental activities, the estimate of develops shall be calculated to indicate the need for enlargement or restrictions. Let me just get my glasses. Child. It's all becoming a blur, okay. This means it's time for me to go to sleep.
That's so much better. Section 8. The new states on June 1st shall submit proposals for development to be considered for in inclusion in those for the new states of America. Researchers and administration shall be delegated when convenient to planning agencies of the new states. Section 9. There shall be submissions from private individuals or from organized associations affected with a public interest as defined by the board. They shall report intentions to expand or contract estimates of production and demand probable uses of resources. Numbers expected to be employed and other essential information. Section 10. A planning branch shall make and have custody of official maps and these shall be documents of reference for future developments, both public and private, on the low. On them, the location of facilities with extension indicated, and the intended use of all areas shall be marked out. Official maps shall also be maintained by the planning agencies of the new states in matters not exclusively national to the National Planning Board may rely on these undertakings in violation of Official designation shall be at the risk of the venturer, and there shall be no recourse. But losses from designations after acquisition shall be recoverable in actions before the Court of Claims. Section 11. The planning branch shall have available to it funds equal to one half of 1% of the approved national budget not including debt services or payments from trust funds that shall be held by the Chancellor of Financial Affairs and expended according to rules approved by the board, but not funds but funds not expended within six years shall be available for other uses. Section 12. Allocations may be made for the planning agencies of the new states but only the maps and plans of the National Board or those approved by them shall have status at law. Section 13, in making plans, there should be due regard to the interests of other nations and such cooperation with their intentions as may be approved by the Board. Section 14, there may also be cooperation within cooperation with international agencies and such contributions to their work as are not disapproved by the president. Just all these people um, with their hands in the pot and making decisions for you and you don't even know how this process works, you know. And so, um, let me see how much longer this is. It's chapter 14, 257. Yeah, y'all gonna have to read this on your own. I'm not reading all this. It's like, child, please. So the end is... 266. 10 more pages. How, how long we been recording? Hold on, y'all. I might go to read it. <sighs> See, we already 39 minutes in, man. Oh, damn. Okay. It's still on chapter 14. Proposed constitutional model. New States of America. We're on the article on the presidency. Section 1. The president of the new states of America shall be head of government, shaper of its commitments, expositor of its policies, and supreme commander of its protective forces. Shall have one term of nine years unless rejected by 60% of the electorate 
electorates after three years shall take care that the nation's resources are estimated and apportioned to its more exigent needs shall recommend such plans, legislation, and action as may be necessary and shall address the legislators each year on the state of the nation, calling upon them to do their part for the general good. And I have to write, um, y'all, my office is so cluttered, but I need to write this down so I'm going to get a sticky note so I won't have to pause that long. Section 2. There shall be two vice presidents elected with the president. At the time of taking office, the president shall designate one vice president to supervise internal affairs and one to be deputy for general affairs. The deputy for general affairs shall see if the presidency be vacated. The, pres- the vice president for internal affairs shall be second in succession. If either vice president shall die or be in cap incapacitated, the president, with the consent of the Senate, shall appoint a successor. Vice president shall serve during an extended term with such assignments as the president may make. If the presidency fall vacant through the disability of both Vice Presidents, the Senate shall elect successors from among its members to serve until the next generation, until the next general election. With the Vice vice Presidents and other officials, the President shall see to it that the laws are faithfully executed and shall pay attention to the findings and recommendations of the Planning Board of the National Regulatory Board and the watchkeeper in formulating national policies. Okay, y'all. So at this point, we know this is not the original constitution, but a constitution of the new states. So I just want to see down here. It's a lot. And honestly, y'all, I'm not going to read how this how I'm reading something, but I'm not going to read this. I'm just not. Now, if it was the regular Constitution, which we should read just to be familiar, um, y'all going to have to read this on your own. I'm going to go back to the page I left off on so y'all can see it, pause it. It's not gave me a headache. That's why I say it's too heavy. Okay, so this is 257. Let me take it down a bit so y'all can um maybe screenshot it. But yeah, I cannot keep going. We don't went too far. I'm thirsty. Y'all just gonna have to pause and read it yourself. I made a, a good conscious effort. I can move forward with a clear conscience. <laughs> this is somebody's proposal. Proposed constitution model of the new states of America. Honey, mm-mm. 
They want all these people involved, three presidents. Like, no. The problem now is it's too many people, too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Everybody want to run some shit, you know. Okay. And look how far. Yeah. I can't read all that, y'all. So the next chapter, we're going to be on is chapter 15, Protocols of the Wise Men of Zion. And let's see how I can read this. But you ain't got to be putting out a A, B, and C, and D. And, mm-mm. and if I would have figured that, I would just probably um went on to 15. But nothing is wasted. We still got half of that chapter read. Oh my goodness, like, listen, why his chapter so long? Oh my God. All right, so we can see that this is going to be a long, long chapter two. And so we're going to save our energy for this chapter. This looks good and heavy and depressing. <laughs> yeah, this book is like heavy. Okay. And still going. Chapter 15 is like 900 pages. Right. No complaints. This is this is why I never finished this book, y'all. Clearly. And this is all still chapter 15. Can you imagine? It's like being held hostage in a chapter. But at least this is not a bunch of laws and stuff. Okay. So. It's just, even the language is heavy in the book. So I'm going back. Um, just trying to. Back to 260 something. Look at all them pages, y'all. We might have to break that chapter up. This book's so heavy. I wouldn't want to keep nobody hostage in a chapter. All right, that's enough of me talking. Up, you know, we are back to the beginning of um chapter fifteen, which is the protocols of the wise men of Zion. And so, we're gonna read this next. Peace and power, and I'm out.